Hey everybody, last night I was trying to program my Redivis R89 with Chirp and that could be as frustrating as getting my dog Chuck to take a bath. It's impossible. He's a good boy. But then something magical happened. I went to bed defeated, exhausted, and dreaming of the perfect programming code plug. I woke up this morning and something alerted me to check Chirp's daily build where I did, and to my surprise, the RA89 is now supported by Chirp. So today we're going to go on a little bit of a voyage to see exactly how easy it is to program the Red of this RA89 with Chirp, and does it actually work? Let's jump into things. To get started, obviously we need our Redivis RA89. We need a Kenwood K style programming cable, which there's a million of them around here. I don't know if your programming cable will work. I have the Redivis programming cable. And to go ahead and go over to chirp at damnplanet.com and we should be able to then download the latest build of Chirp if you already have Chirp installed or if you don't just install Chirp. Plug your programming cable into your computer and turn on the radio. With the radio on, we're gonna open our Windows Device Manager, assuming you're using Windows. And you'll see here, I don't have any explanation points, but sometimes what you'll see is the COM port that is being detected by Windows might show an explanation point. If you have an issue here where the driver did not install correctly, I encourage you to go check out the video I recently made on how to correct your Windows driver issues with Redifice radios. Now we know that I'm on COM port one, let's go ahead and open up Chirp next. Here in Chirp, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click radio on the top of the screen and I'm gonna download from radio. As you could see here, I have my port selected to what was in the device manager and I have my vendor as Redivis and the model RE89. Let's go ahead and click okay. What will happen now if the radio is on, it will read from the radio. But if it's off, you're gonna see this error here, error communicating with the radio. Alternatively, you might see that error if you're using the wrong programming cable or the wrong chipset with the programming cable. So now I'm gonna turn my radio on and I'm gonna click okay again. As you can see now, it's gonna clone from the radio and it will display a code plug list. This is what was already in your radio and I highly recommend that you save the code plug before you go any further, just in case there's any issues, you have something to go back on. And we'll do that by clicking file, save as, and picking a location with that saved, I'm gonna start from complete scratch, like I had nothing in here. And what I'm gonna do is basically hit Control A, then I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna delete everything. So now we have a fresh start, brand new place to play. And what we're gonna do at this point is go to radio and we're gonna query the source as, for example, repeaterbook.com. And as you can see on repeaterbook, I have options like selecting my country, but also the service. So this will be the amateur radio service. Let's just add things in Illinois but uh, maybe I don't wanna do just my county. Maybe I wanna do 50 miles within my county. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put in the latitude and longitude of an area close by. After we type in our latitude and longitude, we will want to limit the bands to two meters and 70 centimeters. And that's because this radio does two meters and 70 centimeters. But then we're gonna to go to limit modes. And it's always good to limit the modes to FM only because yeah, if you, this radio is only analog and it doesn't have all these digital modes, why would we add them to our repeaters? And then I'm gonna click OK. As you can see here, a new tab opens up on the top of the screen. And with that new tab, we have a list of repeaters that are within 50 miles of us. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on the ones that I want. I could do that by holding down Control. And as I hold down Control, I could select the repeaters that I want to add to my code plug. Alternatively, I could just hit the first one, hold down Control, hold down A. It selects everything. And then I'm gonna hold down Control and hit C, or I can go to Edit. Copy. Now I'm gonna to go to the tab for my Redivis radio and then I'm gonna to go to edit and I'm gonna paste. It's pretty simple. Of course now we can do things like also add simplex and or GMRS and uh, let's go ahead and first try to add some simplex frequencies. Well I actually just want to have my simplex frequency in channel 1 and that's gonna be 146.520 so I'm gonna insert in the row above. It moves everything down a line and that's great because then I can type in uh, 146.520 and I can type in national call freak. Okay and that way I know that this is the national calling frequency and I'm gonna know it's for two meters but I could also put in two meters if I want like so for example maybe two meters call you know, NAT. And that gives me an idea exactly where I need to be. Alternatively, I can go through here and I can say, well, I don't need to have high power on this repeater. 
I'd like to have low power or mid power on this repeater. This repeater, I'd like to have low power. Let's say this repeater, I'd like to have high. And I can go through and I can make all those changes and adjustments. So it's very nice. And alternatively, I can go through here and say, well, these repeaters don't necessarily work. This one's a double, you could see here. So I'm going to delete that one. And I'm going to shift everything up. So I keep the frequencies and the channels kind of neat and organized in one place. I would also at this point recommend saving your code plug. And instead of just clicking on file and save, you should probably go file, save as, and create a new code plug from the one that you saved just a few moments ago. So you're not overwriting the code plug that you have in original form. The Redibus RA89 has something like 200 memory channels. And so I'm not necessarily concerned about saying, well, I don't ever use that repeater as much as I am. Well, that repeater doesn't even exist anymore or that repeater has been off for three years. And I went through and I've basically deleted those old repeaters. And now let's go ahead and add GMRS, or at least we're going to try. Now, if you get triggered by things, you might want to just click off of here right now because I'm going to show you how to add other frequencies that aren't ham radio related into your Redivis ham radio. So with that, uh, I warned you, and we're going to click on file this time and not radio query from source, but file. And there's a lot of good information in here. I think it's very important that anybody knows about this. So after we click on open stock configuration, we can go to any of these and select them. So for example, FRS and GMRS. I cannot just hold down control and hit A to select all like I did the last time. And the reason for that, it will auto populate hundreds and hundreds of results. And again, the Redivis RA89 only has 199 memory channels. So instead I'm gonna hit the number one, which is the first channel I wanna add. I'm gonna hold down shift and then I'm gonna hit the number 52. That selects everything within the range. And now I'm just gonna hit control C or edit copy. Then we're gonna go back into our Redivis code plug and I'm gonna to go to edit and I'm gonna to go to paste. As you can see now, I've added all my GMRS channels. I'm gonna save the code plug again. For good luck, let's just add a few more things just so we're aware and it's fresh in our brain, right? So we're gonna go ahead and click on file and go to open stock config one more time. Let's go ahead and add MERS. Ooh, there's the MERS channels. Control A, not gonna work. Shift, select the channel frequency range, and then we're gonna go back into our code plug again. As you can see, if I selected individual cells, that's not gonna work, by the way. What'll happen is it will try to paste all the information into there and you'll get an error. So instead, just click on the actual channel number and then click Control V or Edit Paste and then it will auto fill it. Now, after we save this, we're gonna write this to the radio. And let's see what will happen if we write this to the radio without the radio being unlocked. Of course, this is an early stage driver, so use this all at your own risk. If you've noticed, the sun has now come up, which means I wake up super early so I could do these videos and get other work done in the afternoon. If you could appreciate that, consider liking and subscribing, it would really help me out. But if we take a look now at the radio, it's programmed, but it's programmed only for ham bands. If I was to go to channel 83, for example, it would just end at 430 megahertz. And if you could recall, channel 83 was something like 462.725. Same thing with uh, channel 88, which should have been MERS. It just defaults to 144. And the secret to that is to unlock the radio. I did mention, I've already showed that off in another video. But for example, if you hold down side key two, and then you hold down the number nine and turn the radio on, you're now unlocked. So if we went to channel 88, there you go, 154.600. And so yes, you could lock the radio again by holding down the side key two and eight, and then channel 88 will default back to just 144.0. So it does save everything into the memory. It's just a matter of having the radio unlocked for it to read and be able to comprehend those unlocked frequencies, if that makes sense. The Redivis RA89 is gonna be a huge radio. After all, it's 10 watts, spectrally clean, and yeah, in four or five months, we're gonna see a bunch of people putting out videos about the things I've already told you. So you're gonna be one step ahead. And more importantly, I think what's really cool now is the integration with Chirp. Once you get Chirp support, it makes programming anything, no matter what radio it is, a lot easier. And although it's always good to know how to do things manually, it's a lot better to just get them done on the fly and go with 
predefined databases that we could reference. So great job on Chirp's part. I'm glad that the RA89 is supported. And there are some features I didn't tell you about. Within Chirp, there are multiple tabs. You can click on browser and settings and you could change things in there too. So it's not just as simple as programming frequencies into your radio, but you could really get into depth with the menus and the certain options. For example, you could even change the splash screen so it displays something like the dude or something along those lines. Hey, thanks for watching the channel. Hope you had a good one. Take care.